Hello, Darren here from MasteringInLogic.com. Logic Pro X 10.3 is out with touch bar support and a cool new look. But is it any good? Okay, so the first thing you notice when you first load the new version of Logic up is the new GUI. It's much clearer and cleaner. It's not quite as 3D as it was before. I guess you could say it's slightly flatter. The reason for that is so that it's easier to work with when you're in studios or rooms where there's different varying degrees of light. And for that reason, I think it's much easier to work with. The great news is that everything is pretty much where it was before. So you can quickly get to things and find exactly where you want them. I do like the new fonts. Again, they're much easier to see. The only thing that's moved, the first thing that I spot is the menu that used to be on the left hand side is now on the right hand side. I prefer the way they've separated out the various um, functions and the little arrows that they've created there are really cool. The If I just bring up the beats and time, I like the numbers now. They look much clearer. I work in television, so I quite often use these functions as the time. And that's really nice to work with. So on that front, I think that's really cool. Okay, so one of the really cool things that I love, that I know everybody else has talked about, so I apologize if you've already seen this somewhere else, but that's the track alternatives. It's a great new feature. If you're like me, which you probably are, when you're writing music and you're putting in new ideas, quite often you'll have a number of different ideas that you don't know which one to go with or which one to choose. If you're like me and you write for TV and advertising and all that kind of stuff, I quite often finish a piece, send it off to the director or producer, the client, whoever it is, and they'll come back and they'll say, well, can you change this or we're not sure about that. With track alternatives, I can come up with a whole host of ideas and have them pre-prepared. Or if you're writing music for yourself, if you're an artist that r records and produces and releases your own music, you can create a number of ideas and then once you finish the track at the end, you can then decide, I wonder what it sounds like with the original idea that I had. So for example, here I've got a couple of chords, nothing groundbreaking. Uh, I'm not trying to write a hit record here, but I'm going to demonstrate how to use the um, track alternatives. So here's my chords. <laughs> Okay, so I might decide I want to come up with something else. So what I do is I hold control left click to bring up the track header stuff, go down to track header components, and then go to track alternatives, click on track alternatives, and you'll see a small icon will appear here. Now if I click on that icon and select new, then my region will disappear but you'll notice it now says B so I've now got my A idea and my B idea so I can then go ahead and then create an alternate idea so now I've got two different ideas I've got the original idea and then my new idea so you can compare the two and decide which one you like the most. There's a couple of other things you can do with this. So if I decide that my B idea is the best one but want to see what I had done previously I can click on show an active and there it is there and if I click on the up arrow it says activate alternative and now it swaps them over and I can swap it back again. The other thing I can do is I can actually pre-listen to the alternative so I can remind myself of what it sounded like. Or I can switch it off and then go back to the other one. The other thing that I can do which I really like about this is let's say for example that I suddenly decide that this one here, 
the one that's inactive could be the next four bars of my my pattern so I'm going to grab it and then just put it back on the track up there and now what I've got is two parts okay so the next thing I'm going to talk about which I think is just amazing I do a lot of sound design work so I think this feature is going to be really really useful for me and that's the selection based processing so I've dropped in a loop and I want to spice it up I want to do something with it but sometimes it can be quite long-winded to um, find the sounds that you want to go through everything and then create a new sound for this individual um, track audio file you could do this to any audio file but I'm going to do, do this to um, just an individual hit you could do it to a whole drum track or anything you want so anyway what you do is this you go to click on the or double click on the region so you bring up the wave editor click on functions and then select the selection based processing so you click on that and then you're given the option to load in some plugins so if I just do it in this A column let's do the tape delay because I was going to do that before anyway so we just bring it on the other, from the other screen this is one of my favorite delay plugins I love this and ultra beat is ultra dub is my favorite delay setting I'm going to leave that at the feedback duration and just to give it a bit more edge I think I've already got it here I love this new feature as well recents I just think that is really good and you're going to find that your your use you'll see which plugins you use over and over again okay so I've I've just done this randomly really and I've loaded in the tape delay and the bit crusher you can do anything you like you like you can then pre-listen to what that's going to sound like and then once you've done that is just simply click uh, I'll do add effect tail as uh, effect tail as well because we've got delay click apply and now you can see that the whole thing has been created I don't need to add a sub or anything to the insert this is brilliant because it saves CPU and it also means you can come up with an effect very quickly create an audio file out of it and then um, go from there now of course this is going to last for a long time so what it means I can do is I can then further process my audio file so I'm going to take that out I'm going to create a drop and let's just for the hell of it let's slow it down let's just hear so there we go okay so here's another quick feature that I love that's going to take two seconds to show you this one is brilliant waveform revealed while editing so let's take our amazing effects that I've just created with the selection based processing now it used to be if you would grab the region and then move it in and out you wouldn't be able to see what was there in the audio file that you've edited out whereas now if I click on it you can see that as soon as I click on the function to change the region length it gives me a sort of a ghost of what was there before and I just think that is brilliant because it means that let's say for example if I wanted to fine-tune this section here I can see exactly where the crossover point is and also see what's beyond it as well do I want to include this part or or not that's a great feature it's a really subtle thing but it's gonna certainly speed up the workflow okay so one of the new features that I love which everyone's talking about but I'm gonna talk about it again here and maybe in a different way that some people may not have discussed and that's the new true stereo panning so with the stereo pan before if you had a stereo sound essentially it worked like a volume control if you panned a stereo f sound off to the left all it would do is turn what was in the right speaker down rather than it sort of getting 
sounding like it was getting further away, it would just simply turn it off. And, and that's not really how stereo works. You used to be able to use, or one workaround was using the direction mixer, where you could change the stereo spread of that individual stereo sound and then place it somewhere in the stereo field. You don't even need to use the direction mixer to achieve that anymore. So, for example, let's say you had a, a synth sound that was very wide and you wanted to reduce the width of that synth sound. You could quite easily do that by changing, let's just put this back to the center, sorry, by changing and reducing the amount of width that is on that stereo sound. To get to stereo pan all you need to do is right click on the actual pan pot itself click stereo pan and then it brings it up so I'm going to talk about this in terms of why it's great for me when I'm writing something that is more orchestral based before it could be a real pain to actually get instruments to sound like they were coming from where they should be if they were sitting in an orchestra. With this it makes life so much easier now because what I can do is I can take this section here which is cellos, violas, violins, they're just taking out of the loop library, I haven't actually written these so it's the as a sound it sounds dreadful but it will be perfect for the example. So the cellos in the orchestra sit off to the right hand side so I'm just going to take my pan and put them on the right hand side. What's great about this is I could actually choose to place them anywhere I wanted. And this is this is brilliant in terms of orchestral stuff. Um, in fact anything where you want to pan something within the stereo field. So the violas, I'm going to grab the ends you can do it both together. Uh, if you grab in the middle, up and down, or you can grab on the ends. Or the other one is, if you go towards the end, when it highlights white, you can grab them and you can reduce the width. So I'm going to put the violas kind of there. It's kind of roughly where they, they are sometimes. And then the vi violins are off to the right-hand side. So now I've placed my instruments exactly where you would find them or pretty much anyway where you would find them sitting within the orchestra okay that's enough of that dreadful noise but the stereo True stereo panning is a brilliant new feature. So that's it. I've hardly scratched the tip of the iceberg. You can see from the release notes, there is a whole ton of updates. This is a really, really big update and it will keep us going for quite some time. Okay, that's it. Just a quick note for all my masteringinlogic.com subscribers. All of the videos on the website are still relevant because none of the plugins have changed. So your membership isn't affected and the video tutorials are still perfectly relevant. And you're going to learn loads about mastering. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you soon.